This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, ideas to improve downtown Hazleton were thrown around at a meeting last night. We'll fill you in next. Hello everyone and welcome to FYI for Wednesday. I'm Ken Cara. First, London is back in Hazleton for a one night only benefit show. Hazleton's American Idol Keith London will be performing a free concert for the Making a Difference Foundation to help raise money for the Northeast Regional HIV Coalition. The fun starts at 7.30 tonight at Community Park in Hazel Township. The opening act will feature students from the Hazleton Area High School. Keith joined us earlier today to talk about the show and you can see his interview with our Janine Mazurkevich a little later on on FYI. The Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress asked for public input, and last night they got it. Lisa Sugar reports on last night's successful gathering at the Altamont Hotel in downtown Hazleton. There are many ideas to revitalize downtown Hazleton. That was evident Tuesday night as a nice crowd came out to share their suggestions. Our role in this project here in the city of Hazleton is simply to facilitate uh, a planning process that yields a blueprint or a vision uh, for revitalization in this community. And I should say continued revitalization because there's been a lot of great success already in the city of Hazleton. Our job is really to pick that success up and shape it for the next five to ten years in the community and hopefully identify areas where they can grow and uh, change and um, revitalize the community in a way that's consistent with the vision that everyone's sharing tonight at our meeting. Chris Brown is a project manager and member of Dirk and Edson's business development team. The firm is a consultant for the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress in its efforts to rejuvenate the downtown. Some of the suggestions generated at the public forum? One of the ideas that I have is for the Hazleton Area School District to create a performing arts um, magnet school, magnet high school here in downtown Hazleton, um, possibly to be located at the old Holy Trinity School. Um, I'd also like to see the um, old church that's been condemned uh, next to the old Hazleton uh, Area Public Library entrance rehabbed into a um, performing arts center uh, of some sort. And I also think that um, if we could create a performing arts high school here, um, there's some opportunity to have spillover classroom space in the Altamont as well as a relationship or partnership with um, PTPA across the street, the Old Philharmonic. Beautify the area, have an area like for example where the Blue Comet is. Knock that down and make that a little park where people could sit there and on a good day and have their lunch or just relax. Whether that be young kids, old kids, you know, the elderly and enjoy themselves on a nice day. And while the current process focuses on Hazleton's future, one attendee wants to focus on the present. And I'm thinking of a poof, fast idea of having kind of a flash mob that you see sometimes on at Christmas time in a mall to have all these people who want this to all happen and, and get together and have maybe two minutes of the mass media to bring Hazleton, to bring the attention to Hazleton. The consultants will now take the input gathered over the past few months to formulate a long-term plan. So they're going to put all of that together and start coming up with, um, based on their analysis, they're going to be out, uh, you know, documenting some of the buildings, uh, looking at the, like I said, the ec economic data, and uh, based on that, come up with a master plan and a set of uh, recommended strategies for uh, revitalization. And so. That uh, will be giving feedback um, through workshops, subsequent workshops will be giving feedback to the consultants on their proposals. And then probably by the end of the year, which I, I think in December, we'll have a, a final presentation. The public will be back, uh, invited back uh, to, to hear uh, the recommendations and provide final comments on those. While the revitalization process takes time and patience, the energy is already having a positive impact. This Friday marks the first of what is being labeled Second Friday in the downtown, a day of activities and entertainment to be held on the second Friday of each month in downtown Hazleton. Reporting for FYI, I'm Lisa Sugart. 
Thank you, Lisa. A major roadway was closed early this morning after a man threatened to jump from an overpass. It happened just before 7 a.m. State police in Hazleton say a 21-year-old man threatened to jump from the overpass on State Route 93 onto Interstate 81 in a suicide attempt. Route 93 was closed in both directions and Interstate 81 southbound lanes were also closed for safety reasons. The man peacefully surrendered to his troopers and Sugarloaf Township police and traffic returned to normal. Hazleton police are investigating multiple thefts at the Center City Apartments. They took place sometime in the overnight hours of Monday into Tuesday. Anyone with information is asked to call Hazleton police or to dial 911. A well-known Hazleton business has a new home. Honest Abe's Business and Taxes is now located at 310 South Church Street along Route 309. A ribbon-cutting ceremony was held this morning in honor of the reopening. Most of our customers only pay $75 to $95. That gives them a full tax return, full year round. I'm here for them, and we believe in taking care of our customers. There's a unique story behind how the business got its name. I was a Civil War reenactor, and I didn't want Alice's taxes or Taylor's taxes because I wanted something that people would know that I was going to stand behind my work for them. And I could think of nobody better than Abraham Lincoln. You can stop by the business Monday through Saturday from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. From the desk of State Representative Tara Tuhill comes this. The Department of Veterans Affairs Mobile Veterans Center, which provide, provides free services to veterans and their families, will visit the Laurel Mall next Tuesday, July 15th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. weather permitting, and it will remain in place until all veterans in attendance are served. And remember to pick up your edition of the Standard Speaker. In sports, a little later, we're going to talk about the Hazleton Sports Hall of Fame. And in today's paper, they had a very interesting article about one of the men who will enter the Hall of Fame this year. So be sure to pick up your Hazleton Standard Speaker. Speaking of that, when we do bring, when we do come to sports, the, the sports editor of the Standard Speaker, Dave Seaman, will join us. He'll talk about the Hazleton Sports Hall of Fame, plus the Pocono IndyCar race and much, much more. And after this break, as promised, our interview with Keith London about his his benefit concert. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. And thanks for joining us here on FYI every Wednesday. It's What's the Sense with Tamara. We are back at her shop in downtown Hazleton, and we're doing some easy projects. They don't cost a lot of money. They're easy to do, as I said. And your family, your kids can do it. And some of this stuff you might just have laying around your house, right? Cardboard. All right. Well, I'm not allowed to call it cardboard. It's actually called corrugated board. Okay. And what we're going to use here, we're going to make it's a, a headboard. A headboard. So nice. What you're going to do is you're going to get a, a like a, it's called double wall. It's just a stronger cardboard, mm -hmm. and you're going to measure the size you want. Cut out your squares. Okay. You could make it totally solid. You could do tons of different things, but the, I picked this because I like the different colors. So before you do the little squares, you have a big piece of cardboard, right? right. So when you say measure your headboard out. Th that's what you have to measure against your bed, depending right. on what so size what your bed is. Right. So whatever size you choose. I've seen them like huge mm -hmm. in just solid, whatever, just measure the size that you want and then just figure out, you know, what size you want your squares to be. Right. They can be all, they could be big, they could be small, whatever. Okay. And all you're going to do, is, I use seven by seven. Mm -hmm. And all you're going to do is you're going to take some stuffing, put some stuffing on a piece of fabric. You're going to put your square down mm -hmm. and you're going you're gonna to hot glue this. Okay. Onto your, your board. And you'll see here, right. I have one done. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to put them, piece them together, get your pattern. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take a hot glue gun and you're going to mm -hmm. glue them onto the board. Okay. Okay. Then after you're done, you just stick it on the wall. And it's nice because it's not nothing that can move. How do you hang this from the wall then? Like you would a picture frame? Yeah, just like a picture frame. Okay. You can, I mean, it depends if you want to put holes in your walls or not. You can put just a cord on it. You can um, tack it. Okay. You know, but they're so nice. They're they're so pretty. I, I think they're fun and they're they're like nothing. Easy. 
Yeah. Easy decorating on really pennies, right? And you have a Facebook, you have a website that they can visit, or we're also taking some mail here, right? Yeah, mail me if you don't have the internet, if you don't have um, Facebook. It's 11 East Broad, Hazleton, Pennsylvania, 18202. And we'll have more nifty projects next week. Join us every Wednesday here on FYI. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. Check out this picture now. It's from Facebook, and you can send us your photos on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash FYI News 13 and message us. And my mom always used to say, red sky at night, sailors de delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. And she's not a sailor, so take that with a grain of salt if you're hitting the seas. And if you didn't get a chance to see the sky after the storm last night, take one more moment to gaze at this picture. Wow. Now here's our local weather forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, scattered showers and thunderstorms are expected. Our low will be 59 degrees. On the extended forecast, Thursday looks like a nice day. The high will be 78, the low at night 55. On Friday, another sunny day. The high is 80. At night, a good night to stargaze. It will be 58 degrees. Saturday, another partly sunny day with a high at 80, and Saturday night will be cloudy with a low at 63. On Sunday, showers and thunderstorms come back into the area, 40% chance there, and on Sunday night, another 40% chance. The low is 64 degrees. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat, including our ice cream and yogurt, or some hot food, including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. Well, Keith London is here for one day and one day only, and it's for a very good cause. And I'm glad to have my buddy Keith London back with us here on FYI on News 13 in your community. And Keith, tonight is the big concert, and it's a free event at Hazel Township Community Park. Why did you decide to have this, this concert, and who is it benefiting? Um, so after you know coming out on American Idol, and uh, I've been very involved in the gay community, mm -hmm. and I've been doing... Um, prides all over the country, and I wanted to bring back something that means something to me. And this is a disease, HIV and AIDS awareness. This is a disease that affects, you know, my community. And I wanted to bring it to Hazleton and kind of share and make awareness for it. So those of you who are coming out tonight, what time should everyone show up and tell them about all the fun events that will be taking place? All right, so we got a lot of stuff. Um, the, the concert, everything's starting about 7.45, 8 o'clock. Um, there's going to be Jimmy's Hot Dogs, um, Woods Ice Cream. Um, what else do we have? I got T-shirts. Um, I'm going to be, it's, it's, it's a free concert. It's free admission to be there. But mm -hmm. this, is, this is something to raise money for um, a, a, good, a good charity. So we are trying to raise as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And I can't, write, can't wait to write that big number on the check. I got a big check. It's going to be awesome. We'd like to thank a lot of people that are helping us out. We have a generator provided by Godstein and Humboldt Industrial Supply, APTS, and especially Dennis Gans. He's bringing chairs. He's also giving us an ambulance that's going to be on scene. State police are going to be circulating, so we'll have some police presence, although we don't expect any problems tonight. Um, we have Jimmy's Hot Dogs donating their favorite hot dogs, and everyone knows the key is a big fan of Jimmy's hot, hot dog. Right? You're not allowed to touch the hot dogs. You're singing. Um, Woods ice cream. We have lighting uh, yes. donated. Yes, we have lighting by Jim Kissler uh, from Bloomsburg. He's bringing. This was like a last minute thing. I I got it two days ago. It's it's going to be a really good, very professional, big show. Mm -hmm. So You made a stage. We're going to see that. We have Lynn um, and we have Jake. We have two photographers donating their time tonight. Of course, SSP TV, main sponsor of tonight's event. And we have to th thank Hazel Township supervisors and the community of Hazel Township for letting us use Community Park free of charge. And also our good friend Craig Lukacs. Am I missing anybody? Um, Probably. So we're just thanking everyone. TJ, the sound guy. Yes. My dad for helping me build the stage and painting up until 4 a.m. last night. So um, just anybody that's volunteering their time today and any way a part of this, um, it's not possible without you guys. You know, it's much, muchly appreciated. All right. And finally, I know we're running out of time, but tell us what's exciting and upcoming in your career. I'm working on a covers album that's going to be out 
I'm thinking September around FunFest, around that September 6th, 7th weekend. Um, what else am I doing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Covers album. That's what I'm working. I'm, you know, stay tuned on the, the TV shows. Who knows? I might be on something else. Um, things are in the works. Who knows? He is. He is. I'll give you a little hint. I don't know. Things are in the works. We'll see what happens. You never know. You never know. But um, I'm going to keep, keep chugging along and trying to make it. All right. Tonight's performance will be amazing. Again, if you want to come out, we're going to be there all day. The concert goes till about 9.30, 10 o'clock this evening. Again, Making a Difference Foundation is backing Keith London's concert. It's for one day, one day only. So thank you for joining us here on FYI, and we'll see you tonight. Again, it goes all night long. I don't know what other television show they were talking about, but Keith will be back on FYI for the sportscast on Friday. His hair is awesome. I'm jealous. All right, let's go to tonight's community calendar. You're invited to go cruising on tonight's community calendar. American Legion Mountaintop Post 781 will host a car cruise on Sunday, July 27th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Registration opens at 9 a.m. and the cost is $10 per vehicle. All vehicles are welcome. Food and refreshments will be available. For more information, you can call the phone number on your screen, but make sure you call after 4 p.m. Here's your midday winning lottery numbers from the Pennsylvania Lottery. The Daily, 435. The Big Four, 4635. Quinto, 33941. Treasure Hunt, 25, 16, 17, and 24. Sports is next on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. It's my favorite day of the week, Dave Day, when Dave Seaman, the sports editor from the Standard Speaker, joins us. And Dave, a lot of tournaments going on, some Little League tournaments wrapping up, Babe Ruth tournaments now, a lot of them happening locally tonight. Greater Hazleton, Hazel Township will t face another local team, Valley, in the 14 and 15-year-old tournament. Getting a lot of calls in, I'm sure, for some of these games and some excitement tonight with two local teams meeting up in drums. And it's in a winner's bracket final, too, so the winner is guaranteed a spot in the final uh, with two local teams playing, a lot of local players, uh, past Little League stars, current Babe Ruth stars, and future high school stars, maybe beyond, because there's a lot of talent on, on the baseball level here in the Hazleton area. And if, coming up soon will be the state tournament going to be held down at in Butler Township in Drums down there near Theory Field at that complex. So I'm sure we'll be getting coverage out of that as well. Oh, we definitely will be. We, we plan to cover that with reporters and with uh, photographers. Uh, it, it's a big deal. I, I believe at least eight teams will be involved uh, from the state. I know the uh, Drums Babe Ruth people were looking for volunteers to help uh, with different aspects of running the tournament. And uh, it, it always makes for a great event. It's a double elimination. I said great baseball talent on display and it's right here in our backyard. So take advantage of that and Dave switch, switching gears a little bit whenever I go to Genetti's I take a look at this plaque of all the members of the Hazleton Sports Hall of Fame. You're involved in that process getting ready to induct a new class this fall. Can you talk about the process a little bit and at the speaker too they could re some people could read stories about people who are going into this class. Well it, it is an involved process. We have uh, 15 people on our Hall of Fame committee. Uh, we all nominate people uh, by March of that year, um, and we sit and we discuss, and there's a lot of a lot of discussion. It's not a cut and dry process. Uh, a lot of discussion goes into it. Some people uh, prefer one candidate over another. So there's some lobbying back and forth and going over credentials. But it's an involved process. The guys and gals on that committee uh, take the job very seriously, and uh, it, it's a fun process because, as we've talked about on numerous occasions, there's a lot of sports. Talent, uh, talent, sports people in this area, and it's a perfect opportunity for them to be recognized, and it's something that I take great pride in being part of. And definitely take a look when the standard speaker does feature some of these candidates, because it's interesting. You can look at a plaque and see a name, but to truly understand what they accomplished, you'll get some of the background from there. Dave, let's talk about IndyCar racing. A recent story coming out from Pocono saying maybe next year's race in question, the Pocono 500, lack of attendance, maybe ticket sales. It's on a holiday weekend. I said, I don't know too much about the fan base from IndyCar, but if I was just a casual fan, I don't know if I'd head out on a holiday weekend to see a race. What are some of your thoughts on the Indy race? Hey, I feel the same way, too. I'm not the biggest racing fan in the world uh, in IndyCar. It wasn't on uh, basic cable pack. It was on NBC Sports cable channel. Uh, so people really didn't know too much about it. Uh, there a lot of publicity generated by our own newspaper, papers in our, in our chain and in the region, 
But as far as bringing the people out, like you said, the 4th of July weekend, uh, IndyCar doesn't have the same appeal as it once did when it was in Pocono in the 70s and the 80s. Um, I, I think it has some work to do if it's going to continue in Pocono. And you know Pocono always does a great job of promoting everything that they do, so we'll see what happens there with the IndyCar race at the Pocono Raceway. That's sports for tonight. There's more FYI after this break. It's Wednesday, and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95, plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, the Holy Name of Jesus Parish at the former Transfiguration Church site will be holding their parish picnic July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Each night will feature great live entertainment, and they will be serving delicious homemade food. Be sure to stop by. It will be held rain or shine under the tents. And finally, the 7th Annual Coal Miners Heritage Festival is set for Sunday, July 13th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the grounds of the Number 9 Coal Mine and Museum in Lansford. Underground tours will be available all day. For information, call 610-597-6722. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Mary Chappella of West Hazleton. Mass is Friday at 10 a.m. at the St. Joseph's Church. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Alan Craig Mensinger of Berwick. Services will be held at the convenience of the family from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Damian Michael Yates. Services are Thursday at 8 p.m. at the Butler Chapel of the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call from 6 to 8 p.m. Ruth K. Throne, formerly of Hazleton. Funeral is Saturday at 10 a.m. from the Hazel Chapel of the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. and Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. Albert J. Hudak Sr. of Bear Creek. Arrangements will be announced by the Lehman Family Funeral Service. Grace T. Hyduck of Freeland. Services were held under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. And Carol A. Sotak of Hazleton. Services will be held at the convenience of the family from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. My name is Mary Malone and I am the president of the Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce and today we're talking about the kickoff to the farmers market. That's right folks, it's kickoff time for the Hazelton Downtown Farmers Market every Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here on Broad Street by the Security Savings Building. We'll be having fresh fruits and vegetables for you to come down and enjoy as well as a wide variety of other vendors and some entertainment. So we hope that you'll join us on the kickoff Friday, July 11th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you have questions or would still like to be a vendor, please call the Chamber Office at area code 570-455-1509 for more information. And as well as the kickoff to the farmer's market, Friday, July 11th is the premier second Friday. That's right, folks. Downtown Hazleton will be turned on from 4 to 9 p.m. with, again, different merchants and live entertainment in the downtown area. And then we'll be finishing with the movie at the Markle. We're really excited about this new venture, and it's a collaboration between the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce, the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress, and Power. That's right, downtown Hazleton turned on every second Friday starting July 11th. Come on out with your family and have a good time. So pumped for the Lego movie on Friday in downtown Hazleton, 9 p.m. So get ready for that. Get ready for more FYI tomorrow. We're always on at facebook.com slash fynews13 and ssptv.com. Take it easy, everyone.